main screen. Um, I kind of, I'll run through some of the ones that I use most of the time. Um, like I said, as we go, if you have any questions or if you want to add anything, please, please stop me and jump right in. Uh, so fittings is one that I'm getting in all the time, obviously, uh, tube fittings for the most part. So jump into the gaugeable tube fittings. Right off the top, there's some pictures. Um, it's gonna run you through kind of a basic overview of what you're gonna find in the rest of the section. So uh, 16th of an inch to two inch uh, gaugeability and then all the different configurations that we have. Um, there's a lot of the tops of these have nice diagrams. Uh, it's an easier way of, again, I, I'll grab a, a picture out of this if a customer has a question. And rather than just me trying to talk about how we have a back ferrule and a front ferrule and a nut in a body, um, I can go in here and I can highlight uh, each individual thing as customers need to see it um, based on their individual questions. Uh, table of contents here, this is going to give you the uh, kind of the basic overview of the different configurations that we have in the fittings, um, unions at the top, mail connectors and such, and the uh, different as we go down. I use these pictures sometimes as well if I'm trying to uh, describe what, um, what a fitting is exactly. Um, we get a lot of customers, and I'm sure you've seen the same thing, that we'll call a union 10 different things. So it could be, you know, they'll call it a pipe nipple, um, pipe hole, I've heard before, all kinds of different fun names that they give to them. So it's a real nice way to just make sure that you and the customer are on the same page so that we don't send them a NPT and a nipple on both sides when then really what they're looking for is a, uh, a straight union. So... Another one uh, I use a lot in this one is for the T's, especially um, with the TMT, TTM. Uh, I have a hard time remembering which um, which group of letters goes for which, you know, which is the run, which is the, uh, and where the each individual thread is going to be. So it's a good way of jumping in here and making sure that you and the customer are on the same page. It's another one with the uh, with the with the wording as far as what they think that they're saying compared to what you think that they're saying. So I'll grab and jump in those a lot too as well. Some other information you can find in here, uh, me and Derek actually were talking about this one on Friday, which is kind of what brings it up, the, what the metric looks like compared to the standard with a little bit of a shoulder on there. I know he was saying he had a, a full call for identifying metric versus standard. So this is another way. If you describe to somebody what a shoulder looks like, they might not know it, but you grab it, you jump in here, you grab what it looks like with the shoulder versus without the shoulder. And it's pretty easy to see there. Uh, pressure ratings, also gonna come in here, temperature ratings you're gonna see. Um, I send these out all the time. So what I use is personally is the snipping tool. So rather than um, jumping in and grabbing the entire catalog, which sometimes won't send because it's too big, um, if someone's looking to see what a what the pressure rating of a three eighths stainless steel fitting is, grab the snipping tool, um, the highlighter, and I'll go right across and highlight whatever it is for them that they're looking for. Then you can send it in, in smaller pieces in an email rather than and getting everybody bogged down. Uh, last one that I grab out of here a lot of times is dimensions. So if someone is looking to um, put something into a system, you can obviously have Ryan put together a drawing for you if it's a couple pieces or um, I've been sending a lot of SOLIDWORKS files lately too, but this is an easy way of just seeing exactly what the dimensions on all this stuff is. I've identified fittings before with customers this way, uh, or if they're just seeing if it's gonna fit, all the dimensions come right down here, your A, D, and E, which match up with A, D, and E right on there. So I'll do the same thing with the snipping tool. I'll cut this out. Uh, if it's a three eighths, I'll highlight each one of these as well as each one of these and send that over. And it's a good way of uh, letting the customer see what I'm thinking and what they're thinking. Now, anybody have anything to add on the, the fitting section? All right. Uh, another one I use all the time is the valves. Um, ball valves would be the most common for me probably. So I think what I did was I ran through the 40 series the last time we did. So again, up at the top, you get some pictures of different ways we can do it. Some of the different handles, some of the different configurations. Um, you're gonna get a basic temperature range uh, based on the different series that are in there. So if you're looking for a valve that needs, if you need 5,000 pounds, you come into here, you're gonna see that 3,000 is the max, you're gonna go somewhere else. So 
could save you some time that way as well. Um, materials, packing materials, working pressures, uh, just kind of a basic, basic um, table at the top. And then uh, the pictures and the diagrams for really for, for these things is kind of what I grab the most out of it. So you've got the 40 versus the 40G. It gives you a nice, um, a nice diagram of what each individual component is with some notes on it as well. So uh, these, the break, the, I don't know, exploded version, I guess I would call it, where they break out all the parts is always nice too. All the materials for each valve body based on um, on each section is going to be in here. So when you're looking at material compatibility, people a lot of times will have questions exactly what, um, what the, you know, what the stem tip's made out of, what the packing's made out of. You can go in through here, and I use the highlighter in there all the time as well, too. So for the handle, uh, it's going to be the same right across nylon with the brass insert. But if you look at the upper gland for each, each individual body material, you're going to get a different material for the upper gland. So you can pull out those, th those things there as well. Um, Pressure and temperature ratings. So you come across here with the 40G, the 40, and then the T and the E. And if uh, you get into, say, with a, you're looking at a 41 that's straight and you need it to go up to 200, that dash in there, it tells you you're not going to be able to use it. So you have to go look at something else. Uh, different, different, um, different patterns. So you got the angle pattern and the straight pattern. Again, it's a nice way of, of showing you know, exactly what it means. So a picture is much easier for me to describe than, than using words. Uh, all the different different end connections and then dimensions as well. So you can jump up into here, send that picture. And if someone's uh, wonder, wondering what the overall length is, they can look at A, come down into here and find out exactly what that would be. Hose is one. Uh, this is a big one that I use all the time with uh, with the name with the naming things in here. So at the top, you've got your different breakouts: the fluoropolymer, the all metal flexible tubing, the hybrid, and then the uh, the PTFE lined. So if you're looking for a specific one, that'll get take you right to your page number. Um, this diagram right here is one that I use probably the most out of the catalog. When it comes to names, again, with like union, pipe hole, whatever uh, the customer wants to call it, this way you're on the same page. So overall length versus live length is one that I have uh, customers confused about a lot. So the live length is going to be of the actual hose versus the overall length, which is going to give you the end connections as well. So this is a this diagram I use all the time um, to make sure that the customer knows that they need 24-inch overall length and not 24-inch live length because you're going to get two different hoses in that situation. Some other nice tables that are in this one, it kind of, it breaks out everything um, as far as how they're set up. So metal hose, flexible tubing, fluoropolymer, it gives you some of the, uh, the reinforcement and the core on here. And then um, this is a nice one too, the pressure ratings. So again, if, if you go in and you're looking for a half inch hose, you know that you, you know what your limits are here. So if you're looking for something that's gonna get you into the higher pressures, uh, 2000 plus and you're looking for fluoropolymer, you can see that in the half and a half inch, you're not going to be able to do it. So you're going to jump into one of the all metals, whether it would be the, uh, the FX hose or, or otherwise. Once you do select which hose that you're looking at, or if you're, you're trying to decide between um, an FX and FM or whatever other couple of them, uh, series there might be, these are a nice way of going through and just highlighting some of the things. So I'll, I'll take my snipping tool. Again, if the customer is looking at two different ones, pull it out. And this gives you a nice picture. Uh, Derek and I did this in the field with a customer last week and showed it to him. And it kind of, it, it helps him visualize what was happening. I think he wanted to use this as heat trace and we were saying, man, eh, maybe not such a good idea. But when he goes in and he looks, you can see what a, a convoluted tube looks like on the inside. Um, rather than just a straight one, that was, I think, the, the actual one. So you could take your highlighter and pull out whatever information you need to send. All right, so yep, if this is going to give you your chemical compositions on the left side here with the 304 versus the 316, um, all of your standards. And then uh, for the fractional sizes, these are the basic ones um, with the working pressures along the side. Um, if you can't find it in here, tools and accessories.
two big data sheets. This is a good one. This is uh, for temperature and pressure or for pressure ratings. I can't remember them off the top of my head, so I always have to go into here. So go down into uh, the stainless steel tubing, and this is going to give you all the uh, all your pressure ratings based on wall thickness and um, and tube OD size. Uh, the grayed out ones here would be for liquid service only, so you wouldn't want to use those with the with gases. Cleaning specs is another one. Um, you, you talk to customers all the time about cleaning. Uh, say, you know, I want it. I want it cleaned, and that can be a, a number of different things. So I actually have all these saved right on my desktop too because I've used them so much. But if uh, if someone has a specific question about it, say the SC11 is a is a popular one for the oxygen cleaning. Any uh, any questions that they might have are usually answered in here. So I take this out. It's only a couple pages. I've got them saved right on my desktop. Um, if they're asking about what our oxygen cleaning looks like, grab this, send it over, uh, highlight a couple of, of things in here if it's, it pertains to what exactly they're doing. And then uh, the rest of them are in here as well. So there's the 10, the 6, the 01, and the 11. Those get used quite often for me as well. Uh, other than that, uh, obviously we've got uh, lots of different categories of products that we're, we're using in here. So uh, you know, regulators, quick connects, whatever it might be. Um, you kind of use the same process as you go through. So regulators, we have a lot of options on. You do the same thing. You start with your pressure, you look at your temperature. Um, through the tables, you can go from one to the next, and it's a nice way of pulling out all the information that I put together. Um, submittals, sometimes on these, I'll go to the, to the main part number page, take the snipping tool, and then you can highlight what, you, what each one was. So if you've got your part number across the top, and you're looking for where each one lines up and they want to know what each of them is. So this one's got a KPR1. KPR1 would be 316 stainless steel. Little highlight in there. And that way, rather than the customer having to go through those longer part numbers such as this, they, uh, it's all pulled out for them and they can look at it right away.